Hey everyone, Mr. K here. Another Game Maker video. This time we're doing views, just the basic version of it. Um, sorry if I sound awful. Um, I woke up this morning and found out my render completely screwed up and I have to redo this and I gotta redo it in like well, before I go to work. So here we go. Anyway, views. Very quickly, uh, let me show you the game that we have to work with here today. Very basic, top down. We have a character that can move around and there's little bushes, I'm calling them bushes, for basically just landscape purposes or um, landmark purposes. Um, views are basically, if you think of, a, uh, think of Super Mario Brothers, a level in Super Mario Brothers, old, old Super Mario Brothers, the whole thing's basically uh, a level you can think of as one room. But you don't see the entire room in one screen. When you start Game Maker, that's what you're used to. You see the room, and the room is basically the entire level. But you can make it so that the whole level doesn't appear on the screen at the same time. And that's where views come into place. It's basically like using cameras. All right? you take a camera, you're, screw, just a, you're looking at a portion of it. So... In order to work with views, um, it's going to be in your room properties. We're not going to do anything with objects today. Um, we're going to enable the use of views, and then you want to check off visible when room starts. Now, they give you a whole slew of different views you can use, but we're doing basic stuff today, so you only need the one, and make sure it's visible when the room starts. If this is unchecked, you will get a black screen because there's no view. It's enabled, but there's no view. So it's assuming you're going to do some kind of fancy coding or something with your objects. But um, for what we're doing, we want it visible when the room starts. Okay, so underneath here is um, all the options that are going to work with views with us. Uh, right now, if I ran the game, nothing would have changed. So what I'm going to do is we're going to mess with this one first. There's that great tab beep. I don't know why that does that. Game Maker is so freaking strange. Um... I'm going to change the view in room to be 4 by 300, and you'll see that there's this rectangle that has popped up now, and it's only covering part, part of the room. If I put in an X coordinate, it shifts over. This is basically showing us what part of the room is going to be shown when I run the game. Okay, so give you an idea of what that looks like. And there it is. Oops. Sorry, I forgot to check something off. I thought I made a brand new room. Apparently I didn't. It's from an old recording. So there we are. There is part of our room, and there is my character. Just that part. Now one of the things I want you to notice is the fact that this looks very pixelated and like, well, it looks like garbage. That's because what it's doing is taking a small part of the room and blowing it up to the port. The port is basically what the size of the window is. So if I was to make this the same exact size, I'll get a smaller window, but because it matches with what we're showing on the screen, the pixelation is gone. Everything's a little bit clearer and sharper. Um, before I move into the last part here, you want to keep these ratios for these two similar. Uh, reason being, well, I'll just show you why. Yes, you're going to have to do math. Keep the ratios in check, because if you don't, you get weird stuff like this, where everything gets stretched out one way or the other. Reason being, you're taking basically a 4x3, a, you know, um, a, a short rectangle. I don't know how to describe it. Um, and putting it in a very wide rectangle so it gets stretched out. So whatever you do with your views, try to keep them at least in the same ratio. You can blow them up or shrink them down, but got to keep it in the same ratio so things um, don't get all, I don't know, wonky. Um, now the last bit, the important part is um, how do I get this view to follow my player? That's the big thing with Super Mario Brothers, the fact that as you move through the level, excuse me, As you move through the level, it, the camera follows you. Well, that's easily done down here. You probably saw me click it before because I accidentally had it turned on. We want to follow the object player. 
but the default settings here aren't, sorry. This is what the defaults are, 32, 32, negative one, negative one. If we turn this on now, everything's still gonna be stretched, isn't it? Yes, it is. The screen doesn't move until I get right up to the very edge of it, which is not desirable at all. What we wanna do is we want it to move when the player moves, and basically this is the problem. It's H bore, V bore, which is the horizontal border and vertical border. Um, it's how close you get to the edge of the view before it starts moving. I don't know why they have it at default at 32. I, it's strange to me, but that's what they have the default as. Um, so you can do two things. You can either calculate exactly what, you know, what the distance is from you to the edge of the view that you want, or you can just put in the exact same size as the view, 400 by 300, and not even worry about it because that'll just force it to move as soon as you move. Ideally, it would be half, so 200 by 150, but there we go. As soon as I move, the camera views. The camera view also moves as well. Okay, now this other setting here, which I'll just show you what it does. I, this is bothering me. I'll show you what this does, even though it doesn't really have a use for what we're doing at the moment. Maybe you can find a use for it. It's definitely more of an advanced thing, dramatic shifts of cameras and stuff like that. Um, you saw it right there in action. Instead of it snapping right to where I am, it kind of just lags behind a bit. So... It just left and right it's having trouble keeping up with. Up and down seems to be fine, I guess because I have it set at the same speed. Yeah, my character is, has a speed of five, so it's able to keep up. Um, so you might be able to find a use for that um, at the moment, but just starting out, this is pretty much what you want to play with is your view in the room, and then your port on the screen, and your um, H bore, V bore for when it's following a player. Um, my recommendation for you, where if you're going down this route, make everything huge, okay? Make a giant room, so this way your view in the room is still something like 1024 by 768. Oops, zero. Because you want to have a big window where everything is not pixelated, everything is nice and sharp and clear. So that means in order for views to have any kind of effect, you need to have a giant room. So if you're doing something like the maze that I'm gonna dump on you guys today, um, if you're not in my class, don't worry about what I'm talking about right now. But if you're doing something like that where you're navigating some kind of maze, then probably your room settings would have to be much, much larger. So I don't know, something like, I don't know, just, 4,000 by 4,000. So this way, when we're in views, you'll actually, this might be too big for what you're gonna do, but you get the idea. When you run it, oops. When you run it, you still got a nice big view and everything looks nice, nice and sharp and crisp, okay? Um, if you cheat and just make the room 1024 by 768 and make the view 4 by 3 like I did, everything's going to look like crap. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, our project file is in the description as always. And bye.